Of all the character motivations of Tolkien's world, the Valar are the most mysterious. They were the powers of Arda, who governed the world under the directions of Iluvatar and lived on the western continent of Aman. They are central to the Lord of the Rings mythology, and many of the Valar specialize in unique aspects of creation. The people of Middle-earth would pray in honor of whichever Valar was relevant to their needs, whether that be sailing, farming or killing folk, so we are here to describe them for you today. Number 1. Manwe Sulimo With his name meaning the Blessed One, Manwe was the eldest of the Ainur and the one that best understood the will of Eru. Not only did Manwe preside over the winds, he was also appointed leader of the Valar and supreme ruler of Arda. Manwe first sent the great eagles to Middle-earth, meaning the creatures from the Lord of the Rings traced directly back to him. As a master of air, any suspiciously helpful gusts in middle lore can be interpreted as Manwe's subtle intervention. Number 2. Varda Entari The mightiest of the Valia and queen of the Valar, she is responsible for situating the stars in the heavens above Arda. She was the spouse of Manwe and is also known as queen of the stars. She lit the two lamps, the original pre-tree lights, then used dew from the two trees of Valinor to create stars in the night sky, before later turning her hand to the sun and moon. Known as Elbereth among the elves, Varda was responsible for Elrond's father, Erendil, on a voyage across the night sky for all eternity, an event referenced in the Rings of Pa. Number 3. Yavanna Kementari with the name meaning the giver of fruits, she was of the Ainur and Valar, and one of the Aratar, who was responsible for the growth of all the fruits and growing things of Arda. By far, her greatest feat was raising the two trees of Valinor as replacements for Varda's destroyed lamps. In the music of the Ainur, Yavanna sang of branches of great trees that would receive the reign of Manwe and Almo, and some trees sang to Ilavatar. This is said to be the conception of the shepherds of the trees. She is ranked fourth among the Aratar, the eighth most powerful of the Valar, and second among the Valyar, the ladies of the Valar. Number 4. Aule while Middle-earth's elves will often speak of Yavanna or Elbereth, dwarves are far more likely to mention Aule and there's a good reason for that. Aule is responsible for fashioning and crafting the substances of which Arda, the world, was composed making divine objects such as the two lamps and the sun and moon, which Varda would fill with light. So deeply did Aule love crafting, he even made his own race of Middle-earth, the Dwarfs. He also likely forged the Valar's weaponry and armor for the War of Wrath. Number 5. Mandos Mandos was an Ainu, one of the Arathar and a Valar who was responsible for the judgment of the spirits or fear of all elven dead. Originally known as Namo, Mandos also possessed the ability to bend these rules with Manwe's permission, such as when he resurrected the tragic lovers Beren and Luthien. In his capacity as judge, Mandos also discreet that Elrond and Elros could choose between the parts of elves and men, a decision passed down to other half-elven descendants. Mandos was the sixth greatest of the lords of the Valar. Number 6. Vaire Very little is known about the Valar called Vaire. She was counted among the Valyar, the queens of the Valar, though she was not as great in power or prestige as some. Her storied webs covered the halls of Mandos, her husband. With the passage of time and its many ages, her woven tapestries expanded and clothed all the walls of the halls of the dead. After the death of Finwe, Muriel returned to life and dwelt in the house of Vyre. She was given the task to record the deeds of the house of Finwe. Number 7. Ulmo Often depicted both physically and thematically as a mirror of Poseidon or Neptune, Ulmo reigned over all waters. 
Olmo was one of Arda's chief architects and was always in a close friendship with Manwe. He always distrusted Melkor and the Dark Lord feared the sea almost as much as he feared Vatha because the sea cannot be tamed. Because Olmo loved the children of Iluvatar so dearly, he intervened in the affairs more regularly than others of his kin and is the only male Vala never to have married. Number 8. Orome also known as Alderon, Orome was the Valar's god of the hunt. Orome is described as a mighty lord and a great huntsman, and he would often train his folk and beasts in pursuit of evil creatures. He loved the lands of Middle-earth and was initially unwilling to leave it. He contrasts with the Valar Tulkas in demeanor, whereas Tulkas laughs in spots, Orome is said to be dreadful in anger. Indeed, it was Orome who first discovered the elves and christened them before passing on his knowledge of the forests. Number 9. Vana Also known as the Beautiful One, Vana was an Ainu and a valley who was responsible for the preserving of the youth made for all life in Arda. Among the seven Valia, Vana was considered the sixth in importance. She was the sister of Yavana and wife of Orome and was possibly related to Milian. While having Yavana as a Vala for trees and nature, Vana geared toward flowers and might seem a little overboard. Tolkien doesn't write much regarding Vana's impact upon Middle-earth, but she does leave flowers everywhere she walks which is pleasant. Number 10. Tulkas Astaldo Tulkas was a Vala responsible for participating in war and the last of them to descend into Arda, coming to the aid of the others when he heard of their war with Melkor. No Vala is really dedicated to war, since the concept of bloodshed was largely alien to begin with, but Tulkas, the warrior of the group, fits the mold of an Ares or Mars. Tulkas is described as delighting in wrestling and contests of strength. He wields no weapon and rides no steed. Inevitably, it was Tulkas who got the better of Morgoth, the villain's first foray into Middle-earth. Number 11. Nessa Nessa was the sister of Orome. She was lithe and swift of foot and she loved swift creatures such as deer. Deer followed her train wherever she went, even into the wild regions of Arman. Nessa could outrun the deer with great speed. She was known for two traits in particular, her great speed and her love of dancing. Nessa loved most to retire to the fair evergreen lawns of Valinor, which Orome had cultivated from the richness of his forest glades. It was told that when Yavanna created the forests of Orome, she had planted glades with spells so that they would always remain green and smooth. Number 12. Irmo He was more commonly known as Lorien, after the name of his dwelling place. Irmo Lorien was the younger brother of Namo, who also like his brother was commonly known as Mandos, the name of his dwelling place and also the brother of Nienna. As the master of dreams, Lorien deals in hope and desires and is said to have given the people of Middle-earth strength during dark times, even if specific examples of his influence aren't given. The gardens of Lorien were a place where those in Valinor would come to ease their weariness. Number 13. Este as Lorien's wife, living in the gardens of Lorien with him, it's no surprise that Este's powers revolve around healing, but she remains intentionally distanced from the business of the other members. She did not walk by day. Instead, she slept upon an island of the tree-shadowed lake of Laurelin. All those who dwelt in Valinor drew refreshment from the fountains of Este and Ermo in Lorien. In like manner, the Valar themselves often came to the fountains and would find easing and reposing there from the burdens of Arda. Number 14. Nienna The weeping or she who weeps. Nienna is the sister of Mandos and Lorien, chiefly concerned with feelings of grief and pity. She was responsible for the mercy and grief spread across Arda. Her part in the music of the Ainur was one of deep sadness from which grief entered the world at its beginning. 
she had dominion over the halls of Nienna, which were on the western edge of Valinor, looking over the sea. Number 15. Melkor Predominantly known as Morgoth, Melkor was the first Dark Lord who was originally created as the strongest of the Valar, and Tolkien describes him as having skills and attributes from all of the others. In his prime, he spilled oceans and destroyed mountain ranges. While Eru had blessed the other Valar with a portion of his thoughts and insights, making each absolute in their respective specialities, Melkor was blessed with greater power and a wider breadth of knowledge. Well, there you have it guys, the 15 Valar. And with that, we have come to the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Do tell us what you think of it in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and please do not forget to support this new channel of ours by liking our videos and subscribing to the channel.